This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. This is Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And that theme song is You're So Vain. And I think it's an appropriate song for today's radio show. Because as you know, Rich Dad is about the good news and the bad news. And we're not into the, the hype, you know, the all good news, good news, good news, and you get rich quick and all that stuff. And today we're talking about one of my favorite subjects is the subject of real estate. And the reason I'm playing the song, You're So Vain, is I meet so many, you know what, idiots who come up to me and say, ah, I think I'll jump into real estate. I'm going, real estate's not the stock market. Oh, you know, I bought a couple of properties. I've done, you know, I've, I've bought four or five properties. I know what I'm doing. I said, were they residential? Yeah, but I, I know real estate. Remember those guys, Kim? Or, I remember woman? those, yep. So they think real estate is this flip and flop type of uh, activity. So we have some great guests, but with, for, first, Kim is now back from Peru and Mexico. Welcome, Kim. Thank you, thank you. We had um, two fantastic Rich Woman events. I'll tell you, the Rich Dad brand in Latin America, I, I had no idea the fen- freneticness and the frenzy, and it's, it's just exploding, and, and people are looking for education, and they're hungry for real, true financial education. Yeah, and it's that, exciting. That comes up because what we're going to be talking about is the difference between financial education and financial hype. You know, like you see them in infomercials every single day, and I, and I watch them. I get excited about them. You know, got, it's the same formula. You got some guy, you know, I won't mention his name, but he's a new guy. There's always a new guy coming up every year. They come up and they go, and it's the same formula. So you have Joe Schmo, the new guy, good-looking guy, his good-looking wife. And they go, da-da-da-da. And then and the interview, yeah, I had nothing. And I'm now a multimillionaire flipping real estate. You know, I go, holy moly, you know. And then it's the same formula. Everybody wants to get rich quick. And thank God, you know, we've done our best at the Rich Dad Company to avoid that because there's a difference between flipping and flopping and having some hot chick and some hot young guy up there promising you can get rich quick in real estate. And it does happen, I guess, occasionally, but not for the long term because eventually your stupidity will catch you or more your vanity. Yeah, I, I can do this. You know, I'm, I, I, I've invested in a couple of properties. I have a master's degree in accounting or something. And they really are so vain. And real estate is a very sophisticated game. So our guests today are longtime friends, probably some of the oldest friends the Rich Dad Company has had. I mean, we were so desperate for publicity that I actually flew to wherever you guys were located and went on the rich the, the real estate guys radio show. I did my first infomercial or promo or PR event, you know, basically talking about rich dad, poor dad. So and we've been friends for years and they've now been elevated to the highest category of person at the rich dad company is what Donald Trump says, are they good people? And one of my first things I met with, when I met with Donald Trump, he was asking his friends, and says, is Robert Kiyosaki, are they good people? That's all he cares about. And he doesn't check you out beyond that. So if somebody says you're a good person, he'll check you out. But as you know, there's a lot of bad people out there. They will steal from their mother. So anyway, we have Robert Helms and Russell Gray. They're the co-hosts of the Real Estate Guys radio show. And we're going to be talking about the dark side of real estate, but also the good side, because don't we love this game, right? Oh, my gosh, yes. So welcome to the program, Mr. Helms. Thank you, sir. Welcome, welcome. Give us a little background. I mean, you guys, you know, congratulations. You guys just won some huge award with Hilton or something, right? Well, we're doing a lot. And it's, uh, you know, I love the theme of this show because we're all about getting wealthy in real estate. But the quickly part is the challenge. It takes years and years and years to build up a brand, to build up a reputation. Why would it be any different to build up a great stream of cash flow or a great pile of equity? It takes time. Yep. How many years have you been doing this, Robert? So the radio show's now its 22nd year, wow. and uh, I've been We're the first guys. <laughs> <laughs> you were among the first, our, yeah, our first sure. big get, if you will, when yeah. we were just on one radio station back then. And it's funny, I remember we expected you to call in 
And our receptionist said, your guest is in the lobby. Yeah, I was and, so desperate. <laughs> I wanted to make sure you didn't cut me off. And uh, no, it was awesome. We had uh, just finished your book then, right? And couldn't believe it like everybody. And, and uh, that uh, led to a very long and, and wonderful relationship we've had. We just always appreciated you guys and your message and your integrity. And well, well and what that. we appreciate about you, Robert and Russell, are that you are the real deal. You practice what you And you what practice you teach. what you preach. You don't just talk about real estate. You are real estate investors. You're real estate developers. And, that's, and that is crucial to us because we want real teachers who are doing the real thing, not fake teachers who talk about it but don't do it. So anyway, this is Robert Helms. How long have you been in real estate? All your life, haven't you? Uh, pretty much. Bought my first property when I was 23. I wish I had uh, bought them when I was 18. And but, we wish uh, we had kept it, right? <laughs> we, <should have> kept, <laughs> we all wish we had kept, kept all it, our yeah. properties. <laughs> in fact, I remember uh, when you're on the summit, we had with this panel where we had Ken McElroy and Kim and my dad, and we had all had the same thing in common. Which we all started with a little two-bedroom yep. house. Yep. And it's like, that's where it starts. Yes. You don't have to start with grandeur. Start Trump small. started there, too. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, I think people swing for the fences today. And I, it's not I think you're absolutely right. That's one of, the, one of the myths or one of the mistakes people make is they think they have to go big when they have no experience, no education, and they wonder why they lose money. No, you're going to so, mess up. So yeah, why so not mess up on a small, a small deal? With small money, with small cash. There's so vain. They're so vain. I can't believe it. One of our former ex-partners, I'm a real estate investor. So how many properties? I have I have owned three homes. I said, did you live in them? Yes, I'm a professional. I'm a professional. <laughs> anyway, what, what you would can't you talk, say to that, Russell? You can't talk to idiots. Anyway, so Russell, welcome to the program. Russell Gray, real estate guy, radio host. Yeah, you know, thanks for having me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little bit different than Robert Helms because I didn't grow up in a real estate family. I did buy my first property when I was 19, so wow. I beat you there. Wow. Yeah. First wow. rental property when I was 24. But what I really am famous for is being the king of mistakes. <laughs> and, you well, know. You can't, be, you can't be the king. I'm the queen. I don't know. I've made, I've <laughs> made a Robert's lot of big. mistakes. <laughs> and I think probably the biggest mistake that I made along the way besides uh, selling properties, not realizing that I should have been collecting them. So I was excited about the equity and then I wanted to put the equity into business and I didn't know how to keep things separate. But I think the biggest thing for me talking about vanity is that I always thought I was smart enough to figure things out. Yeah. And instead of now that I've had a chance to be around many, many successful people, the, the one of the common denominators that I see about really successful people is they're humble. Mm -hmm. They ask for help. They ask mm -hmm. questions. They listen intently. And then they think about what was said and they trust their own judgment. And I was none of those things. <laughs> and, and so because of that, I made a lot of mistakes. But uh, but I learned. I think I've learned. And um, we're obviously doing things better now. I would, I would say for Kim and I, we've never lost money in real estate, but we have made a lot of mistakes. Yes. And our mistakes really haven't really come from our side of it necessarily. It came because we trusted people. Yeah. And every realist, I think the humility of it all, the humbleness is anybody who's successful in anything has been, you know, the scientific term for fornications. I got screwed. You know, everybody has been screwed. And when you get screwed, I tell you, it's, you know, I trusted him or her. How could they have done that to me? Have you had that, Robert? Oh, my gosh. Uh, the show's not long enough to go into that. Story, but, <laughs> but we have. And, and it's not just on the transaction side. I see the same thing on the education side. Yeah. They lead you down a path. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People that may or may not have any experience, that doesn't matter. They can flash the checks in the front of the room. That's how you know when you start seeing check after check after check in the PowerPoint presentation. You know, I say, how do you get a check? For, here's a check for 50000 from the title company. Well, you know what? If I deposit fifty thousand in the title company and say I've changed my mind, what do they do? They send me a check in my name from the yeah. title company. So those aren't hard to get, <laughs> right? But yeah. it's such a good point. And trust is a thing that takes time to build. Yeah, but that's no, one of the big challenges. Called, are they good people? Yeah, yeah what a shortcut Trump that is. Are I, you a good yeah. person? Is I, he a good person? I think that's what I mean. One of our key lessons has been, oftentimes we trust, trust it too early. but we don't verify. Ah. Mm. So when we take our, when I take my eye off the game and off the numbers and all of a sudden I, I'm over trusting and giving too much responsibility um, and then it comes back to bite me. So that's a lesson. I, I'm, I'm trusting I've now learned this lesson uh -huh. that I will, I will continue to trust, but I will verify. It's so, so critical. Yeah. So Russell, you know, I mean, um, you amaze me because you're one of the smartest guys I know. I mean, academically, your, your, your mind is like a little computer but you didn't finish college, did you? No, I was too uh, impatient. 
um, I'd been raised by a uh, man that had dropped out of college smart. He, I mean, he got a scholarship free ride to Stanford, very smart man. Um, but I think I came along and I don't know, I kind of screwed things up for him. So he and my mom uh, dropped out and he went into work. But, but in his late 30s, he uh, started a high tech company in Silicon Valley, took it public. And it was right, yeah, it was right about that time as I was watching his career. And I just felt like I, I tried college and I played one quarter of football. And then, you know, I just wanted to get married. I wanted, so I, I started a business and bought a house, got married. I did all that by the time I was 19. Oh. And then I sold out of the business and I sold the property and I discovered equity. I found out that I made more money on, in the equity on the business and the property than I did in actually both my wife and I working full time for that same period of time. So that, that kind of got the bug there. And, uh, and, and I think the advantage that I had because I, I didn't have the patience to go to school was that I always felt disadvantaged. So I became a voracious student. And right, I just, you are. You're amazing. I mean, what, what I, when I need to know something, I call Russell. You know, yeah. Do, 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 do. I just, I, you know, I, I read all the time. I study. I, I like to listen to smart people. I'm, you know, in the beginning, I was afraid to get into conversations. And over time, I, in fact, it was at one of your events, Robert. You, you, I ended up seated next to Richard Duncan, Ph.D. economist. Mm-hmm. Oh my you know, gosh, yeah. I've told the story on our show several times. And I was just we had got I'd gotten destroyed in 2008. And it was because of my ignorance of what was going on in the bond market. I didn't understand the bond market. You did the the gold and um we're gold versus U.S. dollar. Gold versus U.S. dollar event here in in, uh, in Scottsdale. And I ended up seated with Richard. And he was saying that he thought oil was going to go to $5 a barrel right. and gold was going to go to 5000 And I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm way out of my league here, but I can understand how either one of those things can happen. But I'm struggling to understand how they both happen at the same time. And he looked at me and he goes... That's a good point. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I just made a good point to this really smart guy. But, but what it did, it gave me the courage to get into conversations. Yeah, well, and okay. from that point on, I learned a lot faster because I wasn't afraid to talk to smart people. Right. So, Kim, so, how about you? I mean, what is, what is your path? When you, when you, you know, when, I, when Kim and I meet people, oh, do I actually jump into real estate? You know, I want to I just get some handcuffs and tie them down and yeah. say, look, wake up first, right? Yeah, well, it's the same as, as Robert's saying. I mean, I, I started with a little two-bedroom, one-bath house, and then we went to another single family, another single family. It was a, it was a process. There is no get-rich-quick. There's just not. If they're telling you you can get rich quick in real estate, I would run. I mean, it's been a process. The formula is the same for the two-bedroom, one-bath house and for the 200-unit apartment building. The, the formula is the same. But it takes time. It takes making mistakes. It has, you know, we've made all the mistakes as you guys have. The, the tenant moves out. I raise the rent. I raise it too far, and then nobody rents. Or, or, how, about, yeah. or how about the tenant that moved out with all of our appliances? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we had that. We also had a, a and prop- the piping. We had a property manager who started his own business on our credit card from our apartment <laughs> building and nice. bought microwaves and and ovens and tools and started selling them. And I mean, we had all sorts of things happen. We've had tenants move out in the middle of the night. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. Yeah. But uh, but it's a process. And and that's why we can all continue to keep investing and keep um, buying real estate because we've made all these mistakes and we have a whole a whole thing of a bag of tricks that we can pull from when we need. So when we come back, I'm gonna be we're talking this is Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Day Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. We love real estate. We've made fortunes at it, all of it. But there's a lot of bad news that went right behind of it. And again, every time I see these idiots who just jump right in and they bet all their money, you know they're going to get hammered. And the reason I say that is we're going to talk about next, how do you know the bubble is about to burst? The end is near. Because we've, you know, we're old enough to have seen the booms and the busts. And I think we're cruising up to one of the biggest busts in world history. So stay tuned. Once again, this is the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Our guests are Robert Helms and Russell Gray, co-hosts of the Real, the Real Estate Guys Radio Show, and also their Summit at Sea Real Estate Guys Cruise, which I highly recommend if you're really dedicated to learning and not flipping and <laughs> flopping all over the place. So when we come back, we'll be talking about a lot of things, but... I want you guys to think of while we're on the break. What is the biggest BS, blue sky pitch you've ever seen? Because we've seen them all. These guys get up there. 
these guys get up there, they're generally a very attractive or good looking husband and wife and all this. And the suckers float in with checks and credit cards. It's such BS. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, The Rich Eye Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And once again, that's Carly Simon's song, You're So Vain. And I'm talking to you about all you wanna be real estate investors out there. I play this, this song because I meet so many people who are so vain. You know, oh, real estate, yeah, I made some money and I'm just gonna jump right in. The other guy that gets me is a person who says, you know, I say, how many, how many courses have you taken in real estate investing? They go, I have a real estate license. <laughs> Well, that means you're an idiot. That's all it means to me. What does real estate license have to do with real estate investing? Zero. I mean, I can't believe how vain these guys are. I, you know that most real estate agents own nothing? And they're giving you advice on investing? So that's why I, I'm really glad we're having this program. Our guests today are Robert Helms, Russell Gray, the Real Estate Guys radio show. Please tune into their show because they're more specifically on the professional real estate investor. And once again, you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio Show anytime, anywhere on iTunes or Androids, and all our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them because we're only an education company. We have nothing to sell. And that means we're education. If you listen to this program one more time or two more times, you'll be twice as smart as you'll listen to us one time. But most importantly, friends, family, and business associates, especially that idiot brother-in-law of yours who thinks they're gonna jump in and invest in real estate because the market is hot, you're about to get hammered. So it's a very, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the show because it's the dark side of our business. Any comments, Kim? Well, I think I just think it's interesting. And, and I, I love having Robert and Russell here because they are the real deal. And they are the real estate guys. And uh, they are practicing what they preach. They've been investing since they were 19 and 23 years old. So they know what they're doing. But I'm just, I was just looking at this article. And I'm like, where does this advice come from? So they're talking about if a recession comes and if there's a dip in the real estate market or the recession comes, what should you do? Well, if you, this, here's advice. Well, if you own property or assets, sell some so that you have cash. Okay, how hard is it to find a cash flowing property, Robert? How hard is it? Oh my God. It's hard. It is hard, it's getting harder, right? <laughs> yes. And, and that's one of the keys. This is such an important topic because if you think we're near the top, there are things you can do, but it's probably not the stuff you're gonna read in most articles written by a journalist that makes $3,200 a week. But why would you sell when interest rates are near zero? <laughs> I, I think that the big thing is how people approach the problem. And this is where you guys uh, at Rich Dad have really been um, thought leaders because most people look at investing as trading. Yes. Buy low, sell high. Exactly. They've been conditioned to buy low, sell high. That produces commissions for the brokers. That produces uh, capital gains for the tax man. And it produces cash that feeds the bankers. And so the education has been slanted. And it's Wall Street education, mm -hmm. but people pr approach real estate the same way. You have a completely different approach, which is a more fundamental approach, which is the income. And if you focus on the income, you have staying power. You yep. can ride the ups and downs. The price doesn't matter. What matters is the cash flow. And as long as it's positive, you're in. And over the long term, even just the pay down of the loan and modest inflation will build reliable, resilient wealth. But people yep. don't think that way. Well, it's even called structured finance that we control. Yeah. That's, that's why I like it. I mean, even in 2008, when the whole thing came crashing down, we were we were fine. We were fine. We took, you know, there was a little dips because people couldn't afford some of the rents. And yep. so there were some dips, but we were we were OK. We they, it still cash flowed. It's still we didn't have this. Okay, so so let's, let's get into the fun part. The most stupid <laughs> things. See, I think I think we're in a massive bubble right now and commercial real estate funded by private equity. Is going to be the biggest hit. Like Australia, I think they have 12 million cranes in the sky right now. It's crazy. You know, I'll, I walk up and down Arizona, well, look, yeah, there's cranes at, all over the place. Look at Phoenix, place. every single every single postage stamp of land is being built upon right now. And it's commercial. It's not like, not a single family, a little guy building a little rental property. Right. These are very big pro projects funded by low interest rates. And I understand the game, but at the, just before the bubble burst is when all the fruits and fruitcakes come, the fruit flies come flying out there. So, so what is one of the worst, you know, like 2007 was a great time because you all know it was gonna come down because everybody was into flipping real estate, right? So what was one of the worst things you saw, Robert, during that period, just before the crash of 2008? Well, Russell, remember this. We were at an event, and there was a guy on stage guaranteeing. Those are, that's the word <laughs> oh, he that's used. that's the word. I guarantee ah. this property will go up in value. We looked at each other and like, 
that's a problem. Yep. I remember you talking about how when the, the gal at the checkout counter at the grocery store is giving you real yeah. estate advice, you know it's too late. Well, right? she's, got, she's just got a real estate license. <laughs> well, that, that's a clue. Yeah. That's a clue. Or when, or when people couldn't afford a $600 a month rent, but they could go down the street and buy a $300,000 house for nothing down and no Crazy. qualifying. Crazy. Yeah. And we're there right now. Russell, what's, the, what's one of the worst pitches you saw or the most interesting pitches, should I say? Well, I, I think that you had people, remember the days in Las Vegas? Yeah. Yeah, these condo developers, and you would literally stand in line for the right to yes. buy a property that was overpriced, yes. and you would get in and you'd make your deposit, and the entire game was to control as many of those units as you could with the idea that down the road, even later in the same day, you could flip out of it oh and make money because of the way these things were being rolled out. And so it was all predicated a, 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 around this insane... Uh, demand that had no basis in fundamentals or common sense, but it was like a feeding frenzy, and people got so caught up in it, they stopped thinking. They were they were like they were like animals feeding and and trying to trying to get their place in line. And when you when you start seeing that, and it happens on the lending side too, lenders become so desperate to loan, they they lower the lending guidelines, they raise the L, uh, lower the down payment, raise the LTV. They, they, they make it easier and easier uh, to, to get the loan without providing proper documentation. When you start seeing these things happen in the market, you know that it's this last flurry like a star that's about to, you know, I I implode. And that's in all markets. And like the stock market's about, I think we're about two years out from the stock market doing the same thing. It's just going to get so exciting and everybody's going to jump. And right are, you, are you seeing this happening today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You you definitely see it. And the thing is, it, it, it can be great because you can take advantage of some of the easy lending to excess equity. You don't have to sell the property to right. get liquid and be ready for the next thing. But when you do, you just need to make sure you're paying attention to the cash flow. And that's the thing you guys have just been always the thought leaders on. So, Kim, what is, what's the worst pitch? <laughs> yes. uh, well, we don't have enough time. What's yeah, we don't have enough time. I do, <laughs> but, I do, but I do remember those really fat, fat, fat brochures of these new, oh, yeah. right, new development. Here's this, this fancy, fancy brochure. And they're going to guarantee you, they're going to guarantee you an 8% return on your money. Nice. Guaranteed. Now I'm like, how do you guarantee an 8% return? It's, well, as Kenny says, the bigger the brochure, the worse, the, worse the, deal. the deal. Yep, yep. But and when they you were see counting. nice brochures, run. And that yep. 8%, they were counting on getting more and more people in to to buy so that those people would fund the 8% of the people. So it was kind of a Ponzi scheme. Yep. The funniest one I saw is because I'm, you know, the real estate guys, you guys know more about real estate. Kenny knows, Kim knows more about real estate than I do. But I do know shipping. So I was down with uh, Trump. This was just before the crash. And this guy had taken an old passenger liner and condo converted. <laughs> I remember that. Wow. Wow. And I, I go up to this hot young thing, you know, Nice brochure, nice hottie, you know. I said, tell me about this. Oh, and she's telling me about how this condo will float through the world and you can get on and get off and all this stuff. And I said, how old is the ship? She didn't know. And I went, my, my, my degree is in naval architecture. You see, a, a ship like those, you know, these big passenger liners, they should only exist for 15 years. Yeah. Useful lights are finished. So the only place that boat should have gone was not to a condo conversion. <laughs> it should have been sailed over to Taiwan and cut up for scrap to man to a new boat. But she was selling these condos, and these guys were lining up to buy condos so they could float around the world. And I said, holy mackerel, you know, there's a sucker born every minute. But my thing is, is the vanity of it. That's what upsets well, and me. And the other thing is that people just don't know. They don't know what questions to ask. They, they have don't. no idea. They just get sucked into the deal and sucked into the, <laughs> that's the you're going to make educated. money. How, yeah, that's how, why you need that education. What our friend Richard Todd. Oh, my gosh. He's so. the funniest guy. We, he's, he is the only guy older than you guys as far as friends of the Rich Ted yep. Company. And, and he got so excited listening to talk about real estate. He says, oh, good, I invested in real estate. And then he comes up and he shows Kim, Kenny McElroy, and I the property. He, said, he says, oh, it's a property in New Mexico. It's in New Mexico. Look, 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 look at the property. It's in New Mexico. And it's going to be really, really good. And we're looking at it. We go, uh, Richard, uh, that's not New Mexico. That's Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Close. <laughs> so thank God he got out of it. But oh, wow. do you know what I mean? Is that That's the vanity of it. They just think they want to get rich quick. Yeah. There's and, no there's and, no get rich quick in, and let's in let's talk about our favorite T guy on TV. I mean I don't know if we should mention his name, but because we'll get sued by these guys. But he no. was a tiny little Vietnamese guy, 
And this was how many years ago? 20 oh, years many, ago. many, many years oh, ago. At least 30, oh, something yeah. like that, yeah. 80s. In fact, we met him 15 years ago, long <laughs> afterwards, in his little tiny office in Las Vegas. But he was the guy there for 15 minutes. He'd, he'd be on his yacht with all his pretty all the women, pretty girls. the gold if I can champagne do it, glasses, you can do it, yeah. dancing. This little, this little Asian yeah, guy yeah. with... Uh, you know, models and girls were like twice as tall as him and were built like, you know, what, in little bikinis. And here he is on this yacht pitching a real estate deal. Yep. I kind of wondered who showed up at that s- seminar, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, though, you're making a great point about how to recognize a bad deal. When someone has to hype you up on getting rich and this extravagant lifestyles of the rich and famous, they're yeah. not talking about the fundamentals of the deal, the fundamentals of the market, what's going on in the economy. All that's boring. I totally get it, right? But if that's what they're relying on to get you to do the deal, they're trying to get you to a emotional state where your brain checks out and you will sign on the dotted line dreaming, hoping about something that isn't real and not looking at what is real and you should be paying attention to. And that's why you've got to get the financial education. You've got to start small, take baby steps, know it's a process, it's going to take years, but you can become financially free with cash flow, but it's not it's not a quick fix. It's There's no like anything. Like you're not going to lose 20 pounds in two weeks, right? Yeah, right? It's the same thing. If you if you want to get weight off, it takes time. If you want to be healthier, it takes time. If you want to be wealthy, you can do it. Absolutely. It's just slow and steady wins yep. the race. Yep. So, so what kind of programs do you guys put on the real estate guys? You know, for years we've taught seminars and things, but we're not really gurus. We're more journalists on no, our no, show. You guys right? are really fundamental guys. Yeah, yeah and, yeah. and I think nuts our, and bolts, peanut and butter. You know, that's so. it. like we don't have a, a seminar are rarely without an attorney that speaks, you know, and and that's because you have to have that sobering side. Yes, you can make a lot of money, but there's a lot of work. Our, our primary thing that we teach now is real estate syndication, how to go bigger, Explain doing bigger what deals. a syndication is. So rather than buy something just in your own account, if you syndicate, you get together with other folks and some people put in the time and other talent. Other people's money. Other people's money. Some people put in the money. So a passive investor might put $50,000 in a deal and the syndicator or the sponsor or the promoter is the one who finds the deal, vets the deal, puts together the team. Again, you have to be just as careful as in in individual investing, maybe more so. But there are attorneys involved. It's professional investors usually. But you also educate the the investors, the people that are are your raising money from you educate them about the deal you bet the, the pros the cons all of it because well, you don't want you don't want stupid people giving you, you money <laughs> that could be the, the most as we say the most expensive check you ever yeah. took is yeah. one if they don't understand so exactly. you go through a process to make sure they understand and you have to make sure it works for them that it's in line with their goals and with their ability and so it's not rocket science but it takes time yeah. to figure it out and it is there's a lot of legalities around it right you're talking about securities laws but that's not to scare people away that's to say it's a another way that you can, in our world, collapse time frames and be able to build wealth with real estate, passively or actively. So, well, so the point here, can somebody with absolutely no education show up? Well, they can show up, but they're not going to do very well until they take the time no, to get educated about but it. can somebody with no education, you don't have to be already an investor to, to take your class. Oh, no. No, no, no. And that's what I'm getting at. You know, like I, get, I lost my temper. Believe it or not, I lost my temper. You? Shocker. And that's this friend of mine. And she's been around us since the start. And I said, have you ever gone to a real estate seminar? She goes, no. And all she does is bitch about her student loan debt. And I'm going, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. Just go sit there and like, well, I got too much debt. And they stay stuck yeah. in their past mistakes they made when they were 25 years old signing up for a master's degree. And I don't, you know, that's what I've been saying to a lot. I'm really kind of tired of this. Because if a person's going to be that stuck, then why do I even bother talking to them? Yet, that's part of the business, right? That's it. Well, especially today, because there's so much information available. I mean, it, it, there's information everywhere. If you want to learn, you can learn. You know, I'm, I'm a, more or less a self-taught guy, and there's lots of books, there's lots of tapes, there's lots of seminars. And, you know, the best stuff you often have to pay for, but it, you don't have to pay a lot. Well, even to that point, um, when we met Ken McElroy, okay, so we had properties. We had we had not, not a lot, maybe 100 units. And um, most of our properties were like 20 units, 30 units. Yep. And I said to Kenny, I said, <laughs> Kenny, oh, finally somebody that understands property management, because that's where he came from was yep. property management. I said, finally somebody that understands our, our philosophy and our model. 
And he, I said, would you please manage our properties? Because I couldn't manage anymore. I was, I was up to my limit. And he looked at me and he said, um, no, I can't manage your properties because I only manage properties of 100 units or more yeah. per building. Right. And so that was my impetus to start getting more educated and yeah. understand now how to buy a 100-unit apartment building versus a 20. And that's another that's another. Uh, game. It so, is. Can, I, can, I, can yeah. I tell you my story on that? Because Kenny was, you know, it was kind of a cold water, cold water on our faces. You know, you guys. But he was saying, "You got, you're small. You're too yeah, small." You're too yeah. small. And that's another slap in the face. You know, <laughs> you go, "Holy mackerel!" So a few years later, you know, Kim, Kim's, Kim really, Kim's really the guru on the real estate side of our family. Yes. And she's taking the thing bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm walking through Phoenix Airport. Woman comes running up to me. She says, "I've got this really hot deal." It's a three bedroom, two bath house in Chandler. She says, I want you to invest in it. And I, I just froze like a deer in headlights because I didn't want to bust. I said, so finally I said, I'm sorry, but I don't. She says, I thought you were a real estate guy. I thought you were a real estate. She got so livid because I wouldn't look at a small deal. Yeah. Do you, do you know what I mean? I said, I don't have time to do a small deal. Now, 30 years ago, I had all the time in the world. And that's another lesson, whereas we see other guys who jump in, they do these mega deals, Before, they haven't done a small yeah, deal yet, yes. right? Yeah. Well, it's like the cash flow game. You watch exactly. the behavior on the cash flow game and they have a little bit of money and they go for the big deal. Yep. They pick the big deal card, exactly not the small deal. That's, you're yep. so vain, yep. you're so vain. <laughs> I think men do that more than women, actually. But That's true. Um, women are, are better at real estate Women are so pretty pragmatic. Ways. They're yeah. pretty pragmatic. Yeah. They want that, that cash flow, that bottom line. You know, they're also good with a gut check, yeah. right back to you know, the, the people out there that yeah. aren't as scrupulous. And there's a lot of those folks out there, but you can kind of sniff them out, yeah. you know, the, eventually you'll figure it out. Okay. So we come back, we're going to, we're going to bypass Ask Robert because we have the two, the two smartest guys I know in real estate, Russell Gray and Robert Helms, host of the Real Estate Guys radio show. They also do seminars, but they're really been, uh, they're elevated to the good guys. Are they good people? And that's what Trump said to me. Are they good people? And that's their what... website is realestateguysradio.com, realestateguysradio.com. And so when we come back, we'll be talking about the opportunities we see in the future and what, 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 what does your crystal ball say. So when we come back, for all of those of you, even if you don't have any real estate yet, your time is coming because in the next crash is when you get rich. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, The Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Once again, that song is You're So Vain, and we are talking about you and me and everybody else. Everybody wants to get rich quick, and they don't want to pay the price. And once again, close to The Rich Dad Radio Show anytime, anywhere on iTunes or Androids, and all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them because if you listen to this program, again, you'll learn even more, especially if you, you're sick and tired of just doing nothing. I'm sick and tired of people like that. I mean, I say, oh, I don't get good time. I'm, you know, I lost some money. You know, we've all lost. They want money. the they want the quick answer. They want the quick fix. Yeah, and so they watch these TV shows. And there's a new guy on TV. I think he's kind of funny, but he's a new guy. He's, he's, he's always gonna, a new guy. He's gonna suck in. <laughs> same message. He's oh, gonna oh, suck same in. New guy. Same always message. A new guy. <laughs> same and now they got so many TV shows with flip the house. Everybody's making millions quick and all this. And you know, it's about to come to an end. So once again, listen to the the Real Estate Guys, Robert Helms, The Radio Guys Show, realestateguysradio.com, and you have your Summit at Sea, which I go to, because it's an intense, an intense five to six day immersion into real real estate investors, not these show guys. So anyway, we're gonna talk about what you see coming in the future. So Kim, what do you see coming in the future? Well. We're actually working on something that we see coming in the future, and that's um, senior housing. And because we have all these baby boomers that are getting older and older and they're going to need assisted living, so we're actually working on a project right now that we're taking a – it's a, kind of interesting. It's going from a fitness club, which was the baby boomers, you know, drove the yep. fitness club trend. And now um, we're tearing that down, and we're going to build senior housing. So same same customer, <laughs> <laughs> just a little older. Well, we're, we're awesome. uh Robert Helms and I were at the, was it Gene Garino's? Gene Garino's uh, Residential Assisted Living yeah, for, Event, yep. For those of you who want to learn about the biggest boom coming, which is old guy housing. <laughs> and I, I was, they invited me on stage and I said, well, the person that should be here is Kim. The only reason where she is in assisted living is she wants to make sure there's a place that'll take me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll, 
that I'll let belligerent, cranky old men in there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, please look at uh, what's Gene's uh, website or handle? Uh, so the easiest way to uh, reach Gene probably is just in an email, right? Um, yeah. So I guess it would be uh, ALF, Assisted Living Facilities at realestateguysradio.com, and we'll send you information about Gene yeah. and a webinar, got a webinar a free does. webinar you that's, can see. That's our specialty. And, and you guys have done it really successfully in uh, – Hotels of all things, right? In yeah, Boston. you know, it's interesting because it's the Belize. same in Belize. is the same client. We talk about ways to, you can market to the affluent. Part of that's because there's less worry in case of a recession because the affluent still go on vacation. They're going to still pay for mom to be in assisted living. Right? There's certain areas in real estate. We saw this in the last downturn in the market we're in in Belize. The whole Caribbean was down 20% mm. in tourism in 2009, but Belize was down 1.8%. And so what happens in assisted living is it's really not the occupant that is your client. It's their it's kids. It's their family. Right? Yes. And yes. so what Gene teaches is rather than just pick any assisted living, you cater to a little higher clientele because they have the budget to do it. For us in resorts, it's the same thing. The multiples are good. You know, for us, it's finding a market that makes sense where the directory is correct, where the systems are good. That's why we affiliate with a big brand. Uh, but we didn't start there, right? We started with little houses. Mm -hmm. And little by little, you build up your education. And today, with the market changing, I think we all feel the change coming, you have to pay even more attention to what you're investing in. Yes, yes. So, right. Russell, what, what trends do you see coming? Well, wait, wait, one second. Oh. Could you give a plug for your uh, Belize property? Well, absolutely. Uh, we don't even talk about that on our show, but on your show, we'll tell you that uh, if you want to go down to it's Belize. It's a beautiful and... property. Every time I go down there, I go, why are you guys here? But I understand. <laughs> it, was, uh... it, was, it was a mind, mind-numbing project, wasn't it? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's a lot of years, a lot of great investors behind us, but it's called Mahogany Bay Village. It's in Ambergers Key, Belize, and mahoganybayvillage.com. You can learn all about it. Yeah, I see it come out of nothing. It yeah. was a mangrove swamp, and now it's this beautiful. You guys were there when there was nothing there but a couple old concrete houses. I, and we, I, uh, I think that's the beauty of real estate. You can actually see it where the stock, all you see is this ticker. You know, I mean, you don't, you don't see anything. But real estate is much harder than stocks, I would say, a thousand times harder. Oh, yeah. But your problems are bigger and your liabilities are bigger. Yeah, so. that's that's why you don't want to jump into a big deal right away. No. Get that experience yep. resume. Get yep. that ballast. Yep. Yeah. So, well, and get the right relationships because you're ultimately you're not going to know everything. You know, you learned a lot working with Kenny, yep. Craig. Yep. You know, you get the right people. Yep. Um, you know, Robert and I knew that we needed somebody smarter than us, and that's where Beth came from, <laughs> right? So I, I think coming back to the question of, you know, what what's do we your, see in yeah, the future? Yeah, what's your crystal ball? Yeah, crystal. so, you know, I think that it's safe to say maybe interest rates continue to go down, but that's kind of hard. They're pretty low, which yeah. means that there's a greater possibility they would go up rather than down. Um, if, you know, trying to save that, we end up printing a lot of money that could end up meaning things that are core components like commodities and energy would go up. The point of that is, as what's been going on for a long time, the poor or the middle class are going to continue to be stressed. So if your customer is that, uh, you know, working class person in a rental property, and that's what a lot of tenants are, you want to make sure you're in marketplaces and product niches and price points where there's still people above you. So in tough times, they can come down to yeah. where you are. Yeah. The other thing is, of course, we just talked about is having some type of an offering that caters to people who actually will have money, do have money, and are going to be in a better position to weather the storm. You know, because you don't really have to prepare for good times. In good times, everything goes up. Everything is good in good times. What you really have to do is be prepared for bad times. And if they don't come, it's better to be prepared and not have bad times than to have bad times and not be prepared. And it's a good point because we do not invest in high-end apartments because if there's a crash, they're all going to move out to less less yep, expensive, exactly. right? So we're, we're always middle of the road. Yep. Yeah. It makes sense. Be just slightly yeah. under median, what we call recession resistant. So people still, it's one of the charts we use in our presentations is great. And you alluded to this earlier, Kim. It was this big downturn in real estate prices in 2008 and nine. Mm -hmm. God bless it. But not the rents. <laughs> Yeah, the rents. The rents stayed yeah, pretty good. Yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. of a dip, but yeah. pretty good. Yeah. That's a big clue. So once again, you know, the, the beautiful thing that you guys did was you co-branded, right, in Mahogany Bay. Who'd you co-brand with? Uh, with um, one of the largest hotel companies in the world, Hilton. We're a curio by Hilton. That's one of the Hilton's 15 brands, and it gives us all kinds of great stuff. Not only access to 72 million Hilton Honor members, but also just systems and training and technique and things we sure didn't know. And, and it's a boutique market. We're the first branded hotel in our marketplace. And we just thought, you know, 
these are people that know what they're doing. They understand hospitality. We've learned a lot about it, but we certainly don't know as much as them. And it's been uh, it's been great. You know, part of it is real estate investors are are mavericks, right? We're we're those lone wolves, and the Hilton's a huge corporation. So it's a love-hate relationship. They move slowly, (laughs) but they have so much experience. It's really saved us a ton. But don't you also have Home and Garden or something? Oh, Coastal Living Living Magazine, yeah. It's uh, so their sister uh, publication. We're one of a a handful of Coastal Living-inspired residences. And uh, Coastal Living Magazine's been out 20 years now, and it's not a hotel brand, um, but it really does cater to kind of our avatar, the person who's looking to have that coastal life. And it's uh, it's been awesome. Are people still investing with you? Yep, uh, we are mostly sold out, and that uh, has been a great process. Um, but uh, there's still uh, an opportunity, and I think it's still a good opportunity. One of the things that uh, we have is lifestyle investing, we call it. So a lot of folks who will you know, spend a few weeks or a few months down there, and they can certainly do that. And then when they decide not to do that, it's in the rental program. Of and the they hotel. get to, yeah, of the hotel. The one I, thing I think that's important oh. on that note, excuse me, just one sec, is Robert actually takes people down and shows them the market, not just our project, but all the other projects Everybody's on the project. island, because it's really important for somebody who's considering either buying as an end user or as an investor. Well, that's for any investor. They've got to go to the market where You'd they're going to You'd be amazed how many people yeah. buy property. Right? Without they, ever seeing it. Out of yeah. state, yeah, that out doesn't, of, without ever seeing it. That makes it. no sense. So yeah. can I, this is just, I'm just curious if you've heard about this trend. Um, everybody wants everything delivered, right? So I, what we've heard is that warehousing and storage facilities are going to be a big trend coming because everybody wants it delivered to their house. Yeah. Have you seen this? I think so. Distribution is huge. Yeah. And what happens at distribution is it is this accumulation of resources. So there are some of those industrial and warehouse projects that aren't going to work or existing projects that get nudged out, but it's a big part of it because there's more and more of that happening. It's the age we live in. And it's not just Amazon. There's a ton of logistics companies, and uh, that's an area that's pretty exciting. We went to the port in Savannah to look at Mm -hmm. exactly for that reason. And actually, we found out we're a little late to the party for that port because there was a lot of warehousing being built already. Sure. Um, Savannah Savannah, Savannah versus Charleston. That's a great area because the Panama Canal, which is my world of shipping, Panama Canal, the Chinese are making a huge investment, uh, investment digging yeah. a new canal to get through. Right. So there's always opportunity, and the, the most important thing is do you hang out with the right people, good people? Are they honest? Have they been through the mill? Are or they, they educated? Is, are they experienced? Are they What's their track record? <clears throat> or are they on TV with some hot women or the little Asian guy with <laughs> Jumping hot <around>. blondes and <laughs> bikinis? You know, I like that too. But anyway, it's... I would just go to it. I mean, even if it's a little Asian guy with hot blondes and bikinis, I'd go and listen to what he has to say or she says. You know, Both sides of the learn. coin, right? Yep, yep. That, go listen. Well, I'm not against yep. it. Do you know what I mean? That this new guy coming in from Las Vegas, he's, he's, he's had his own TV show for a, while, for a while, and he's talking about the same thing. The formula's the same. You know, you'll get rich quick. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we, as we all know, things do change. So anyway, I want to thank you guys, Robert Helms and Russell Gray, thank Real you, Estate Russell. Guys Radio. Thank com. Thanks, guys. And please look into what they're doing because they're the real real estate guys. And thank you all for listening to this program. Uh, we don't have we didn't have Ask Robert because I'd rather have the real guys here. So thank you for listening and have a good life in real estate. Bye. <laughs>